Hey everybody, um, so today I just wanted to talk a little bit about the TCP functions in LabVIEW and do a little demo on how you can use these um, for sending data over a network. Um, so if you don't know what TCP is, this is Transmission Control Protocol. Um, you'll also hear it referred to as TCP IP. So it's basically a protocol built on top of IP, um, which allows you to transmit packets over a network. Um, some of the advantages of TCP, um, they are connection based, right? So um, you're going to have uh, basically like a, a client server architecture where something will be listening and something else will reach out and connect to it. Um, and then they uh, can transmit packets back and forth to each other. Um, packets are basically sent and then so the writer is going to wait for an acknowledgement to come back from the reader. Um, and then it will move on. So, and if it doesn't get that acknowledgement, it's going to try retransmitting the packet um, until it can get a that acknowledgement back, or like a timeout occurs. Like, you know, that acknowledgement never comes back in the specified amount of time. So, really nice for making sure that um, things are received, um, especially using it in you know LabVIEW. Typically, we're doing you know test systems, industrial you know kind of controls. Um, so it's really useful in like a command type um, architecture, right? Where I'm saying, hey, turn this thing on, do this thing, right? Um, and I, when I send those commands, I'm waiting for an acknowledgement back to make sure that, oh yeah, they were received. Um, so I know that the target I was sending it to did receive my command um, as opposed to like UDP, right? Where I could send a packet um, and I actually don't know if it was received or not. So um, a good way to guarantee that those were received. Um, so. Um, let's take a little look. So if I open up the data communication and go to protocols, there's this TCP section. So this has all of the TCP functions. Um, so we have a TCP listen, which I'll demo what this is. Basically, this is just going to set up, this is meant to be used by like a server, um, your TCP server, which doesn't actually have to be a server, right? It could just be an, a LabVIEW application talking to another LabVIEW application or even a LabVIEW application talking to a non-LabVIEW application. So um, basically just has it listen and wait for an incoming connection. Um, and I'll demo this. Um, open connection, uh, sorry, the TCP listen will also open the connection once something reaches out to that port. Um, the open connection is meant to be used on like the client side where it's saying, hey, go reach out to this certain port um, and connect to this listener that's waiting there. Um, you basically got your read and write functions, um, which I'll demo those. A TCP close. Um, down here you have two other listener functions, so TCP create listener and TCP wait on listener. Um, these are ways that you can create basically a dedicated listener. So you, if you just use the TCP listen function, it's going to listen and wait for some a connection to come into it, and then it's going to establish that connection and move on. Um, these are ways that you can create basically dedicated listeners, um, which is useful when you're doing like a multi-client server type thing, right? Where you might have something that could have any amount of incoming connections this is a useful tool and I'll share a separate video where I go over setting up a multi-client server um, and then these other three functions are kind of just some tools for you know working with you know IP addresses and whatnot and you know kind of resolving aliases connecting just basically being able to get the information you need to connect to something um, there are the TLS functions as well if you have um, the latest versions of LabVIEW. It's been out for a few years now, um, but this also allows you to incorporate encryption on top of your communications, which I will share a later video on these um, for now though. But for now, I, I have basically two different examples of ways that we can use uh, the TCP functions. So I have this simple client set up. Um, so I'm using the TCP open connection function to connect to localhost. So I'm just doing on my same computer. If I was connecting to another computer on the network, I could put the IP address or the DNS name of that other computer there instead. Um, and then the other thing I have to do is just specify which port I'm connecting to. So your listener needs to be listening on that port that I'm connecting to. 
Um, and then in here, I am just reading data over and over and over again. Um, so I have this set to, there are a few different modes, um, and I'll demo um, some other ones as well. I have this set to CRLF, which what that means is carriage return line feed. Um, so basically it's looking for a termination character to end the message. So if you've used Visa, you should be relatively familiar with this concept. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, you know, the server will send a message and it's going to end that message with the carriage return line feed. Um, if you've ever used Telnet, um, Telnet is basically TCP that uses carriage return line feed to terminate the messages. There's a little nuance when you get into like exception codes, but I've created um, basically Telnet code in LabVIEW doing essentially just this, the uh, carriage return line feeds. So maybe, you know, I send a command and I terminate it with a carriage return line feed and I use the carriage return line feed to read that data back. So I was just gonna show this. Um, so it's gonna wait until it either gets 1,024 uh, bytes of data or it gets a carriage return line feed, which in each case here, we're gonna be getting that carriage return line feed. We're just gonna do that over and over again until we close this out and then we're gonna close out the connection. Um, so that is our client. Let's look at our server. So our server um, is using the TCP listen function. So I've specified the port. There are other options here. Right now, let's just focus on the port. So I've said, hey, listen on port 6666. Um, and then in here, I'm just generating a random number, flattening it to a string. So just one thing with the TCP functions is all your commands are read and written as strings. So if you're, you can work with any data type you want. It could be um, you know, clusters, arrays, numerics, you know, Boolean values, whatever, regardless of what you're doing, you're going to need to convert it to a string. Um, and when you read it, you'll read it as a string and then you'll need to convert it back to its data type. So um, one thing that you will have to manage with TCP is just converting everything to and from strings. Um, JSON is a really good way to do that as well. Um, it just allows you to take to easily convert any data type to JSON and easily convert it back to the LabVIEW data type. So JSON is one I use a lot for network communications just because it's simple. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we're ending each of these commands with carriage return line feed. And we're just writing that over and over again until we close it. So let us run our server. So you can see I have displayed here on the screen the messages that are formed. Nothing's happening right now. That's because it's waiting on this listener function. Um, so if I turn on highlight execution, you can see it's just waiting for an incoming connection, which hasn't come in yet. Now, once I start my TCP client, you see both the server and client are transmitting data back and forth. So this is just generating random numbers, sending it back to my client. Um, and yeah, easy peasy. Um, okay, now there is another scenario I wanted to show um, that doesn't use carriage return line feed. So um, we can go ahead, delete this, and we have this uh, second block of code here. So this is another way you can send messages using TCP without using carriage return line feed. Um, so I'm still creating a listener on 6666. I'm still generating my random number. Um, this actually could, I could remove the carriage return line feed here. That was left by mistake, but not a big deal. Um, and then here I am uh, getting the length of this string. So I have this message here and I'm getting the length of it. Uh, and I'm gonna get this, it's an integer value, but I'm gonna type cast it to a string. And then I'm gonna send one packet that's just, hey, the length of this string. And then I'm gonna send a second packet that is the actual string. So this way I'm saying, hey, this is how much data I'm sending, and now here's the data. Um, so that, and then, yeah, stopping that when we're done. So that's what that looks like on the server side. Let's look at the client. So can delete that. Um, and here we have the code ready to go for implementing this. 
Um, so still connecting a local host on 6666. Um, the first thing we're going to do is read four bytes of data, um, which is going to represent that length that we're sending here. We're going to typecast that to an integer. And in our TCP read function, we're going to specify that as the number of bytes to read. So I don't have anything connected now. That means the same thing as being in standard mode. So this is now we're not dependent on carriage return line feed. We are just um, reading a, a certain amount of data, right? So we're sending a command that says, hey, this is how much data I'm sending. And then over here, we're reading that and saying, oh, they're sending this much data and then reading that much data. So um, let's run this. So let's run our server and run our client. So you can see it works exactly the same. We're able to transmit that random number back and forth between the two, and it works just great. Um, so there's, those are two different ways that you can use the um, uh, TCP functions in LabVIEW. Um, there, you, know, there's, you can do much more advanced configurations than this. Um, you can program for reconnects, right? So if the client or whatever were able, was, became disconnected, you know, trying to reconnect, uh, trying to buffer data that needs to be transmitted, etc. You know, there's a lot of different things, um, but this is the basic configuration that you'll always use for TCP. Um, I pretty much always use either the standard or carriage return line feed. Um, there are instances where you might want to use immediate, um, which is basically, you know, reads what there is at that moment, right? However much data there is right at this moment. Uh, and then buffered I'll talk about in, in another video I was planning on making on that. Um, and if you're interested in TCP communications as well, I highly recommend the NISTM library that is available on VIPM. Um, this uses these TCP functions, but manages a lot of this stuff for you for like getting the data sizes and whatnot. Um, and so I highly recommend that if you're interested. I use that when um, pretty much always when I'm working with uh, network communications because it makes life way easier. Um, but yeah, that is TCP in LabVIEW. Thank you guys for tuning in. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.